I just wanted to quickly show you how I create a template project for making cinematic rendering in Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully this helps you speed up your workflow. I know I have used up a lot of time when I created new projects and went through making the same things and changing the same settings every time when I didn't know making templates was possible. But now I know and it saves me a lot of time every time I create a new project. We'll go through the project settings, the plugins that I use, and finally how to save the project as a template project so we're going to open up unreal engine 5 and under games we're going to use the third person blueprint template and enable ray tracing i'm going to name mine cinematic template and here we are uh, just the standard third person template i'm sure you've seen this before we're going to delete everything in the scene except for the third person character which we'll leave just for reference and we're going to go into project settings and we'll search for firstly we're going to search for ray tracing we're going to make sure support hardware ray tracing is on and enable use hardware ray tracing when available and make sure that's on Next in the search bar we're going to type RHI and set the default RHI to DirectX 12. Next we're going to search allow static and in the engine rendering we're going to disable allow static lighting. And next we're going to search use normal and make sure use normal maps for static lighting is off. And next we're going to search extend. We're going to enable extend default luminous range in auto exposure settings and make sure that's on and next we're going to search support stationary skylight and turn that off and also support low quality light map shader permutations and turn that off as well so all of these settings that we're turning off is for performance we're going to search for g buffer and set the g buffer format to high precision normals and next we're going to search for reflection capture resolution and set it to 1024 okay and i'm going to search for apply pre-exposure and make sure apply pre-exposure before writing to the scene color is on and next we're going to search for enable pre-exposure only in the editor and turn that on and also finally we're going to search for support sky atmosphere affecting height fog and turn that on and we're not going to restart just yet and we're going to go into plugins this time and in plugins you can really in for the plugins you can really turn on anything that you need i'm just going to show you the very basic ones that i almost always use so we'll search for movie render queue and turn that on and next we're going to search for modeling tools and enable that and make sure bridge and Niagara is on even though they are on by default and we're going to search for volumetrics and enable that as well now we can restart the engine so we've got our settings and plugins enabled uh, but there's still nothing in the scene it's, so we're going to create and place actors panel and under lights we're going to bring in directional light we're also going to bring in a uh, skylight and and we're going to bring in a sky atmosphere and we'll bring in a post process volume and a volumetric cloud and a exponential high fork and the sphere reflection capture even though we don't really need one yet and now we have the mannequin sitting in nothingness so we've got the tools for a basic scene and the sky uh, but we need to adjust the settings so they are actually working properly i'm just going to put all these things that i've just added to the scene and add them to a folder called lighting so it's easier to manage later i will also add a small landscape you can obviously change this landscape to whatever later but just so that i have a ground reference so firstly we're just going to um, lock our exposure in the scene 
and in the post process volume I'm going to search for exposure and I'll check minimum EV and max EV and set both to 1 and also in the post process volume search for bound check infinite extent so that post process volume affects the whole scene so now for the settings we'll firstly go into our directional light and change the source angle to about 4 this affects our the softness of our shadows as you can see yeah, we'll set that up to about 4 so we'll set our indirect lighting intensity I'll show you what this does so we'll add a simple cube in front of our mannequin so we'll bring in a cube simple cube to demonstrate the indirect lighting and you can see the light is bouncing off the cube to the mannequin which is quite cool and if you increase the indirect lighting intensity in the directional light it increases how much light bounces off each object so I'll set that to about 3 just for now and we'll check light shaft occlusion on and light shaft bloom on as well I'll set the bloom max brightness to about 3 but you can change this later to whatever you need under ray tracing I'll set the shadow source angle factor to about 2 and samples per pixel to about 3 and just under that we're going to check atmosphere sunlight and now we have an actual sky back in the directional light we're going to check cast shadows on atmosphere and cast cloud shadows as well this is really up to your preference but um, if you want to create a very cloudy scene I suggest that you use this feature next we're going to go to our skylight and remember we disabled stationary skylight so we need to set the skylight to movable and in the sky atmosphere we'll leave everything as is for now and we're going to go to our exponential height fog so with our exponential height fog there's a lot of things that you can play around with the fog density the fog height fall off etc but I'll leave everything as default the only thing that we're going to change here firstly the fog and scattering color we'll set that to black and also the directional and scattering we'll set that to black as well by the way you can use ctrl L in the editor to move the sun so you hit ctrl L and just move your mouse to change the sun direction if you didn't know and next under volumetric fog we'll check volumetric fog on and set the albedo to black as well and now we're going to tweak our volumetric cloud so in our volumetric cloud we're going to swap out our material uh, make sure in the settings show engine content and show plugin content is enabled left hand side scroll all the way down to volumetrics content and in content sky materials we're going to use the volumetric cloud to profiles paint clouds morning so you can either copy this and make an instance out of it or I'll just show you I'll just and now we can go into our volumetric cloud material and going to change some of the parameters and there's a lot of things that you can change in here so I'm just going to adjust the speed because it looks a little bit too fast at the moment 0.001 so you can control the density you can have a very cloudy scene or a, or a very clear sky so obviously this is a template you can adjust this however you want for each project so I'll just leave it as is for now and finally we're going to go back into our post process volume and search for final and enable final gather quality and we'll set it to about four and next we're going to search for reflection check the method leave that to lumen and check the quality and set it to about four as well we're going to type ray and under ray tracing global illumination and we'll check the type and set it to brute force and check the max bounces set it to about two and samples per pixel to about four 
So there are different ray tracing and reflection parameters that you can control here. You can either set this in your process volume or you can set those just before you render out in movie render queue. And finally, we're going to search for motion blur and enable amount and leave that to 0.5 and hit save. I'm just going to show you what you can do with the sky atmosphere and the parameters you can play around with to make your sky look interesting. I'm just playing with the Rayleigh scattering scale um, and the me scattering scale and the me absorption scale. You can kind of see how this would be interesting in a desert scene or a Mars environment or whatever. Oh, and one final thing, just to, just so you can see the shadow here, I'm going to set a cube just next to the mannequin. And in the console command window, we're going to type r.shadow.virtual.smrt.raycount directional space 4. So this also depends on your hardware and um, what kind of scene that you're building, obviously. But so this will increase the quality of the shadows. So now we can hit save and exit from the editor. So firstly, we're going to find our project that we just created. We're going to copy the folder. So we're going to copy and we're going to go to our C drive um, where you installed your engine. Normally for Windows, it's C drive, program files, Epic Games, Unreal Engine 5. In the UE5 folder, we're going to go to templates and paste and in the folder of your newly copied project, so we're going to go into config. So there's five INI files in mine, and we're going to go to default game. And in here, you, you can see there's a project name, and I'm just going to change this to cinematic template. It can be any name that you want, and hit save and exit. And we're going to go to um, one of the templates to go to um, TP first person and go to config so there's a INI file called template defs we're going to copy this we're going to go back into our cinematic template project folder and go to our config folder and paste and now open up the template defs file and you'll see um, these categories and localized display names and the description etc for English, Korean, Japanese, Chinese. Uh, I'm just going to change the English one for the project name, cinematic template. And I'm just going to edit the description of this as well. Just going to write the basic template with cinematic settings enabled or whatever obviously if you speak korean japanese chinese you can change this and we're going to hit save and exit and now we are pretty much done so when we go back and open our unreal engine now you can see under games there's a new template called cinematic template we'll create a test project and you can see our project is exactly as how we created just before. So you can change any settings or have any kind of content that you want in that um, template project. Um, a lot of the settings and a lot of the basic content that I really use, I can have in the template already. So it saves me a lot of time and hopefully it saves a lot of time for you as well.